If you're stuck in a rendering rut, that's okay. You're only human after all. But you know what? Verus AI isn't human. And when it's partnered with Enscape, the result is endless creativity. Today, I wanna to share with you exactly how you can master Enscape and Verus AI in under 10 minutes. To start, we have Enscape open in front of us and we've already downloaded the Verus AI plugin. Once complete, you'll see it up the top here. It's a little page with a V and an arrow pointing up. And of course, if you hover, it says Verus. So let's start by selecting Verus. It'll ask you to log into your account. So go ahead and log in. I've pushed Enscape to the left-hand panel and I've got Verus open on the right. So we can have a direct comparison throughout this entire project. Now with Verus open, if this is the first time you're using it, you're gonna see a series of presets available to us. If you hover over one of the presets, it'll tell you what it's doing. So it's gonna to try to create a timber autumn realistic render, which has a modern design with large windows, timber building during autumn, relatively self-explanatory. So if we click on that preset and then simply just hit render, it'll start rendering down the bottom and you'll see one blue bar starting to activate. We have three more blue bars available, which means we can literally click on the next one, hit render, hit the next one, hit render, the next blue bar, keep going, next blue bar, keep going, final blue bar, meaning we can do four renders at once. And by the time I clicked those four renders, I already finished my first render. So you see that first render that we selected with a preset provides you with this timber look in an autumn backdrop. Pretty stunning, if I can may say so myself. Very quick, very inspirational, but not what I'm looking for here. In this scenario, I'm not looking for design inspiration, which this is kind of trying to provide. I'm looking for render inspiration. So let's keep going. The next preset, very similar, but again, not what I'm looking for. A beautiful abstract scene. Again, beautiful. A scene in the dead of winter, incredible. I don't think this is the vibe I'm going for with this render, but once again, it's providing me with some incredible ideas. Dark storm clouds, sun setting in the background, and so on. It starts to get a little funky and creative after a while, depending on what prompts you put in. What I like to do is simply go through these, select a few of the presets, render it out, and then find the best image that I'm looking for to work with in the Compose section of Verus AI. Let's say I've landed on this image as an inspiration for my rendering composition. Now, don't get me wrong, we've got gold mosaic all over the building. It's using an award-winning render, golden hour, sharp fill grain. So it's providing me with the rendering composition that I'm looking for. You can see the moody atmosphere in the background, the cloudless day, trees just barely visible in the background through the fog. And of course, the building highlighted out of everything. This is a stunning render, but I wanna take it to the next level. So what I generally do is once I've found some inspiration through Verus's main prompts, I'll go to my Compose panel up top. Now, the Compose panel is where Verus takes it to an absolute next level. We have six preset items up the top that we can simply just tick on and off. Turbo Nature, Is Aerial, Is Interior, Film, Cinematic, and Atmospheric. Obviously, cinematic and atmospheric are ticked on, and that's exactly the vibe I'm going for. And down below, we have a few sliders. The sliders are self-explanatory. Geometry override. Do we want to let Verus take over our model? In this case, no, we really don't. We're not looking for architectural creative ideas in this specific scenario. We're looking for rendering inspiration. We're looking how we can make our renders so much better. Material override. No, again, I don't want to let it override too many of my materials. I'm going to drop that down to 10. The prompt strength is also where you can fine tune. You can either have the prompt really powerful. So if you're an exceptional AI expert typing in prompts like it's a second language, then smash that prompt strength all the way to up to 100. But if you're a lay person like me who generally knows AI but isn't an expert in, by no means, let's just drag that prompt strength back a little bit and give Verus some creative freedom. By just fine tuning those settings, let's see what we get. Okay, so what we got is obviously a little bit too reserved. We do wanna give it some right to change the geometry and some right to change our material. Where that lands, we'll just test it out and see. So at 75 and zero, we're still not getting exactly what we're looking for. We might have to increase a geometry override just a little smidgen, and maybe we change some of these prompts as well. Obviously, we don't want a mosaic facade and we don't want it to be designed by Daniel Liberskind. 
So we can take away that. Let's type in ultra modern glass building, award-winning render, golden hour, sharp, fill grain. I like that. Then because we're in Australia, let's add a little bit of native vegetation by typing in Australian native vegetation foreground. Let's adjust our geometry a little bit up and hit render again. And now we're finally getting somewhere. This is something I can definitely utilize and help influence my render. We've got this beautiful golden sunset flowing through the building, fog in the backgrounds, native Australian grassland at the front. We've obviously pushed the material override up and the geometry override up a little bit, but left our prompt strength. If we increase our prompt strength, then we're again getting a little bit more of that Australian native, but we're also getting that award-winning render look that we're desperately seeking because our renders are getting boring. Now, before we sign off on Verus and move on to the Enscape rendering component of this video, I wanted to point out the fact that Evolve Labs Verus AI is also included as a plugin to any of your base modeling software. So for example, here in ArchiCAD, I can come to the top in Evolve Labs and load Verus direct out of ArchiCAD. That way, if I'm looking to have some quick inspiration from ArchiCAD before I even go into Enscape, and potentially I'm looking for more of an architectural influence, so I can change my model, manipulate it, even make it an entire glass box like some of those original renders had, then we can do that at a much earlier stage in the process. Verus obviously syncs with your scene from the first open, but what happens if you want a different scene? What happens if you want a different view angle? The same premise applies if you're using the ArchiCAD plugin or the Enscape plugin. To get a different scene, simply move around in your program and then come back to Verus and hit the reload button. It'll automatically refresh that image and crop it to where it needs to be. So just keep fine tuning, moving a camera angle until you're happy with the preview image. And then go ahead and repeat the process for as many angles as your heart desires. So now let's take this as our influencing factor and take it into Enscape. The main difference between this and a current basic import in Enscape is mainly atmosphere. So let's open up our settings and start tweaking. So first of all, let's change our sky. Let's go source skybox and let's load a HDRI sky. So let's start by importing this mountains outlook HDRI and moving and rotating it around until our sun is perfectly positioned behind our building. Let's leave it somewhere just there on the left of the cantilevering roof line. After that, let's go through it one by one. Main Two point perspective is okay. Auto exposure, I don't like auto exposure, so I'll fine tune that slowly. I want my rendering quality to be ultra, and then I'm generally happy with my field of view. It's a bit wide for what we typically use, but that's okay. We wanna lower our exposure so it's nice and dark overall. Then we're going to our image. We wanna decrease our highlights as much as we can. We want that dark sky, but we do wanna increase our shadows to bring them to life. We want to adjust all of our settings like our saturation and our color temperature, fine tuning our lens flare, our bloom, our vignetting and our chromatic aberration. We're trying to match what we see on our inspirational image. What's critical in, it, in this image is our fog, of course, so intensity 100% and height adjusting as we see fit. After that, we go in and treat it like a regular Enscape model, changing the materials, adding plants and fine tuning. So let's start with our asset library. Once we have our asset library open, the first thing we wanna do is go to our single assets or potentially our multiple asset placement, depending on your workflow, type in grass, and then start populating the scene. I'll jump ahead to the finished resource with all of my grass populated. You'll see I have mass shrubbery in front of me, a little bit in the background. And then to finish it off, I've included a few trees as well. The HDRI does most of the heavy lifting for us in the background, which is incredible. After that, we wanna come back into our model. For me personally, that's ArchiCAD. And open up the Enscape material library. So Enscape material library. Go through, download as many materials as you need, import them as you see fit, and then replace what you need in your model. Once you've updated all the materials in your Enscape model and you're happy with the finished result, we can simply close our asset library, come up to the top and hit the screenshot button to export out just that image. Now, obviously this as an exported image just isn't aligning color-wise with our inspiration. So we can simply throw this into any color grading software change the greens to yellows, and throw in a little bit of extra fog to end up with an image that looks like this. Anyway, that's all for me, team. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you smash that subscribe button down below. And like always, I'll see you next week.